Boss finally came out with an editor for the ES8 effects switcher. And I'm going to give you a rundown, so stay tuned. Man Bun Metalhead here. If you haven't heard, Boss recently released a firmware update for the ES8 version 2.0. And in that, they came out with the ES8 Editor, which is a program that you can put on your PC or Mac to uh, control and update the ES8. It is a pretty powerful software. It might not be perfect, but it works really well at updating the ES8. As a lot of you might know, it's not the easiest to make updates on the ES8 itself. Uh, so this gives you a really good overview rundown uh, you can see exactly what's going on in the es8 kind of all in one screen so let's uh let's get to it in order to use the es8 editor you need to update the firmware on the es8 it's really simple i released a video go check that out uh, before you go any further the es8 editor software can easily easily be downloaded off of the boss website i'll put a link down in the description so you can get to that really easy just takes a couple minutes to install. I'm running it on a PC with Windows 10. Before starting the ES8 editor, you wanna make sure you can connect to the ES8 itself. And you do that through, through the MIDI in and out. Uh, in my previous video, I showed you this. It is the uh, M Audio MIDI Sport. Worked really well for updating. Um, I did run into a couple problems with it. it. It worked fine connecting to the ES8, but I got some errors in the program itself. It didn't cause any problems with functionality, but getting the errors was kind of annoying. So I have another uh, MIDI interface that I use um, off of my audio interface. And so I just use that and I haven't had any problems with that. So all you have to do is connect MIDI out from your interface to the MIDI in of the ES8 and then MIDI out of the ES8 to MIDI in of the audio interface. After you open the ES8 editor, the first thing you want to do is go to the option option and select your MIDI ports. Now mine, I have the FF800 set up here uh, for both in and out, whatever you have uh, selected or whatever you have connected, use that. And we'll hit the connect button and it'll request data from the ES8. Doesn't take too long, maybe just a, a couple seconds here, maybe 10, 15 seconds. But once that's all done, we're going to see this pop up here in a second. Now I got to check some error. I seem to get this every once in a while. I'm not exactly sure why. So if that happens, hit the connect again. And if it doesn't try to connect it, I think it has a, a valid connection. Um, so we'll just look in here and I can see here, this is my uh, first bank, bank zero. And these are all the channels that I have. These are all the patches that I have selected uh, set up so I think it's it's uh, it's good now once you have this connected uh, we're just give you a rundown of what the options and everything are in here and it's really self-explanatory in the upper left hand corner here you kind of have your menu options and uh, we'll start with we'll start with play options so these are just system settings essentially and so you can set everything in here as you would on the ES8, but it's really easy to see. I mean, as you can see here, it's all in front of you. Um, you have preferences, so these all different preferences of that are in the ES8, they're right there. And you have MIDI and other settings that you can select. We also have the PC map here, and I'm not gonna open that, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, so, uh, but you can easily go in there and, and change those settings, which um, I'll kind of show how to do that in a different video, because I have uh, some cool tricks with that. So look out for that. But once we have all our system settings, if we want to adjust those, they're all there. Once you make a change, so we'll go to, to the play option. And I'm going to say, let's change my max uh, bank that I can select to 12. So I don't need all 100 banks. It's way too much for me, especially if I'm in a live situation. I don't want it to go all the way from 0 to 99. I want to go from 0 to 10 or 0 to 9. So... We'll change our max to 12, and then when we go back to the bank, or the patch, it's going to, if you saw that real quick, it sent that system settings into the ES8. So now those system, those settings are saved in the ES8. 
really easy. The biggest functionality I see here is actually editing the patches. So we're gonna go into bank one. So I have bank one completely uh, blank. So that's all factory settings. So I'll just go through some of the functions here. Uh, so first up here, we've got our uh, pa uh, patch. So we have zero one, we can actually select that and then go ahead and select any one in here that we want. Um, so I can go to 10, uh, five or wherever. So we're just gonna sit where we're at. You can change the name. So we'll do demo patch, okay? You can set your BPM if you need to. You can set uh, the MIDI clock out. So on off. Uh, once once you make any change, you can write the, the information. You can pull it at any time too. And here's all your output options. You have uh, your boosts. So uh, zero or plus up to plus six boost. The actual outputs, your buffer, your inputs. Then you have here, you have all your pedals or the switches or loops, however you might call them. Uh, so you can easily just click one, drag it, click it, drag it. Now to turn it on, you just hit this, the circle. It turns every single or whatever one you want on. And then the square here is, I believe it is uh, essentially the, uh, the let ring option uh, where when you when you switch patches um, say for instance you have delay tails or a chorus tail that you want to keep going once you switch switch a patch you can easily do that here uh, it's an option in the ES8 it's been there forever um, the problem is you can only have two of those um, and it also coincides if you need to do any mixing um, of the any mixing of the the loops themselves, uh, which gives you that option as well. Uh, so showing showing you the the mixing option, you can uh, do kind of a side chain thing, where we select here and we go mix, and now I'm going to put easily loop three and loop seven in kind of a a parallel mix. So it's going to send the signal to three, send it to seven, and it's going to mix it back up here, and then. I'm gonna do say the same thing with four and five. And now those are mixed too. Now you can only have two mixes. So that includes the tails. Um, so I can't select the, the ring out tail anymore. Or uh, I can't select another, another mix. So that option is no longer available for any of these. Cool new thing with these mixes is what they used to do is um, set the mix to negative six dB for each loop and then bring them together. What you can do now is set that mix yourself from zero to negative six, your call. Um, you have to select manual mixer mode, you select, so mix one, I want them to come back at zero, mix two, I'll keep it at negative six. So, uh, really nice cut. It's kind of a new new feature. Pretty nice. One of the other new features in here is the separate function. And we'll go here. Maybe. One of these. So I'll get rid of that. We'll add the... This would be downstream apparently. The separate. So now what we have here is after loop 6. Loop 6 will go to loop 8 but also go straight to output two. So loop eight will go to output one, loop six will now go to output two. And I believe you can then put other loops there. So now you can do this maybe, do that. So see now you can have two, two outputs there uh, with different loops. I mean, it's kind of all, all a lot of cool functionality there and you can easily mess around with it. Um, it's a lot easier than pushing the buttons here. And just give you a quick overview of some of the other options. We have all the your control here, so you can turn on, uh, typically use those for maybe amp switches, that's what I use. So say the clean channel on off, or maybe a boost on off, whatever you have set up. You can have your expressions here. Um, you have all the control expressions down here. You have your MIDI set up here. Um, so when you send, for instance, a MIDI signal to a pedal, 
um, that has MIDI control on it. You can say, hey, I want that, that pedal to uh, change to this certain channel when you switch to the channel or the patch on your ES8. Um, you have your assign options. I mean, you have everything that's on this ES8 in there. And that's what's great about it. Like you can, you can just see, you saw everything within the last five minutes and it's all there trying to get to all that on the ES8. It's going to take a lot more time. So it's, it's fun. You can do a lot more experimentation. If you want to try some of these, like mixing these loops around, you can try it out. You don't like it. You just revert back. So once the, once that's uh, your, your patch is set, you just hit right. And now it's going to, you're going to select what you're going to write to. So uh, we were already at zero uh, bank one, number one. So we can select that or we can select anything else on here if we want or whatever patch. Save that to whatever patch you want. We're just going to stay at the patch we're at. Select it, execute, and now it's writing the patch. Uh, shouldn't take too long. Usually it takes, what, five seconds maybe? So now this is written and you can see here on bank one, patch one, you have the demo patch I just created. And now, well, I didn't like something. I want to turn this patch off maybe. You hit right. Go back to there and it writes it again another five seconds maybe and it's it's up there so and every time you go and you switch uh you select a a patch it's going to pull that information that's on the es8 pull it there and then you can mess with it um, we'll go back to our demo patch and you can see that it's exactly set up the same way it was before easy enough uh the other really kind of cool uh, thing on here is the librarian so if you go to librarian option here it's going to pull out all the patch information from the es8 and put a nice little matrix here and then what you can do with this was really cool is you can export the entire every single patch is on here you can you can save that as a file so i'm going to call that maybe es8 editor in today's date uh, I'm not going to do it. It does take a little bit of time to, in order to do that, um, to, to save all that information, but you can, and then you can have all different kinds of setups on your ES8. And once you have them, you can also import here. So I have something that I've saved, um, about a week ago and I can pull that up and then it'll save that right in here. And so you can have multiple different setups. You don't have to worry about changing something and going, oh, I don't know if I'm going to want that or keep it. You know, I'm going to try it out. And if it doesn't work, easily pop back to what you had before. Uh, it's really powerful. I mean, it's just, it just, in my mind, it opens so many doors and, 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 and everything for just for the creativity of it. And uh, I'm really stoked about it. If you're thinking about downloading the uh, ES8 editor, you're not sure if you want to, um, or you're looking at the ES8 or looking to update the, the firmware, I mean, do it. This thing is so powerful. It's a great addition to any pedal board. Uh, so download it and start playing around with it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, whatever, write them down below. I will uh, try to answer them for you. And if you like it, give it a like. And if you want to hear more about the ES8 or some of the other stuff that I work on, uh, hit subscribe and you'll be notified of next time I upload a video. So uh, thanks for watching and rock on.